Okay, so uh, this talk is going to be about epsilon delta proof strategies for linear and constant functions. So the idea is we are trying to prove that linear uh, uh, constant functions and linear functions are continuous. And for that, we're going to try to use the epsilon delta definition of uh, continuity or rather the epsilon delta definition of limit. And we're going to sort of go through the entire definition, uh, work out a strategy to show that definition holds. So recall the de epsilon delta definition of limit. It says that uh, the limit as uh, x approaches c f x is l. This is true if if the following holds. So imagine you have a game with two players, the skeptic and the prover. The prover is trying to show the statement is true, and the skeptic is trying to show it's not true, or the skeptic is trying to uh, find evidence that it's not true. The skeptic first picks an epsilon greater than zero, uh, which is essentially the skeptic is trying to pick a neighborhood of L. Okay. Then uh, the prover chooses a delta greater than zero, which is like picking a neighborhood of C. Okay. And uh, uh, and basically this interval c minus delta to c union c to c plus delta. This is the same as uh, c minus delta to c plus delta. Excluding the point c itself. And then the skeptic goes ahead and chooses a value of x in the interval the prover has chosen. And then, uh, which is basically within delta distance of c, and then the question is, is the fx value within the interval the skeptic has chosen? If it is, then the prover wins, which means the prover has basically managed to trap the function value within a certain interval. And if it isn't, uh, then the skeptic wins. Okay. And the uh, idea behind uh, uh, ep like epsilon delta proof strategy is that or rather, the definition really says that this statement is true if the prover has a winning strategy for the game, which means the prover has a way of picking a delta in terms of epsilon such that the prover is going to win the game, whatever x the skeptic picks. Okay. So now, what does it mean to say a function is continuous at a point? The limit at a point is a value. Equals the value. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, so, okay. So we are going to try to show that the constant function and linear functions are all, are continuous at every point. So let's begin with the constant function. This is a function f, which sends any input to a constant value k. Okay. And the question is, how do we show it's uh, continuous using this? So go on. How do we do that? Well, no matter what. Well, so what do we have to do? We have to figure out a winning strategy for the prover, right? We have to figure out a strategy for the. We have to figure out a strategy for the prover to choose a delta based on epsilon such that uh, the prover wins the game. So, what strategy should the prover uh, follow? So, okay, what what is this thing the prover is trying to prove? What limit statement is the prover trying to prove? The prover is trying to prove that limit. x approaches c of fx is k for any c. Now what is fx? fx is just k, right? So this is what the prover is trying to show. Okay, so how would the uh, prover do this? What strategy should the prover choose? This the prover can choose any answer as epsilon. No, the skeptic chooses epsilon. Oh, I mean, the prover okay. can choose any delta. Okay. So in fact, what you're claiming is that the prover always wins. So any strategy works. Okay. So this is a good game. It means that whatever it's, the prover doesn't actually need to think. The prover can just play anything and it will work. Now, why is that true? Well, suppose the skeptic has chosen an epsilon and the prover has chosen a delta. Then the skeptic chooses the x, which is within the uh, interval. And the question now is, does fx live between k minus epsilon and 
k plus epsilon because now the l is k and the answer is yes because fx is also equal to k okay pictorially what we are saying is here is the function okay here is a point and uh, and 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 the skeptic is basically picking an epsilon so the skeptic is picking something like this and the prover then picks any delta and we notice that whatever the values of epsilon and delta the function is trapped within this rectangle right when the inputs are, are in here the outputs are in, in this okay so that's why uh, any strategy works. Okay, let's now proceed to the linear case. So what happens in the linear case? What should the strategy of the two board be? So in the linear case, what are we trying to show? Let's write down what we're trying to show first. We're trying to show that limit as x approaches c yeah, of what? fx. fx is what? Is a c plus b? No, is a x a x plus b, right? And we want to show that this limit is hmm, a c plus b. That's what we want to show, right? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So, uh, so how would we do this? What would our epsilon delta strategy be? Mm -hmm. So, over a well, uh, remember epsilon and delta, delta are both positive numbers, so you should put a what here? A epsilon. Okay, now why does that work? Well, your your intuition, I think, is something like this. So here's the linear function here's the graph and here's your point now if the y values are trapped within epsilon then it's enough in order to trap them it's enough to trap the x values within some delta such that such that the ratio epsilon over delta is the slope of this line okay or rather uh, the absolute value of the slope if it were the other way around okay so this is really saying it's a slope of the line so that's what that's the ratio between the vertical differences and the and the horizontal difference so the output differences over the input differences so that's the idea okay let's now try to show that this strategy works okay so let's try to show the strategy works write down Is that the only strategy that will work? No. What I else can work? Denominator can be anything of the value greater than epsilon. Okay, so any any choice of delta small for any epsilon, this is the largest value of delta that will work, but la, but uh, smaller values of delta uh, will also work. Okay, let's let's try to prove the prove that the value of delta works. So what would you want to show here? Or any epsilon. Okay, let's say epsilon, epsilon and delta are fixed, are, are already known. So what's our claim here? The claim is that if uh, x is within delta distance of c, so if 0 is less than mod x minus c is less than epsilon over mod a, then then what? Fc is here. Fx. Fx. So Ax plus b. Okay. So this uh, this thing you can also write it. It's more convenient to write it as saying it's the same thing, right? We are going to write it like that. So a, Fx minus the limit. What's the claimed limit? It was the value at the point. So this is what we want to show. Okay, so the proof okay, 
and uh, let's just simplify this. So what what does it simplify to? Absolutely of a times x minus c. Okay. And uh, absolute value of a times absolute value x minus c. Okay. And uh, now what do we know? This is less than epsilon over absolute value a. So this is less than. Okay, so this is positive and this is less than that. So you get this, which is what? Epsilon. Epsilon. So we have shown that this a difference is less than epsilon, which is what we wanted to show. Okay. So in the constant case, any strategy worked. In the linear case, the strategy that works is delta is epsilon over absolute value. So in, in if you are actually given the function, then like if the if the linear function is 5x plus 12, then the strategy is delta is epsilon over 5. Okay. In particular, if, if your linear function was just fx equals x, then what would the strategy be? What would your strategy be if it was just fx equals x? I'll choose any delta that's less than or equal to epsilon. Yeah, but the, the, the uh, default strategy, the wider strat, the biggest delta you choose would be delta equals epsilon. Okay, so in, in a subsequent video, we will see the quadratic function case. Okay. Uh, okay. By, by the way, there are there are other ways of trying to of showing more directly that these functions are continuous. What we have really done is we are trying to explicitly show how the epsilon delta thing works. It's just an illustrative uh, exercise.